The Macpac Minaret has perhaps the most polarizing reputation of any tent I've seen. People seem to either love it or hate it. I anticipate the direction you sway, be it yay or nay, will depend largely on the types of trips that you tend to do. Also, before I go any further, I'd just like to extend a big thank you to Gavin Davidson, MacPack Design Manager, Mr. Jeff Spearpoint, author and acclaimed New Zealand outdoorsman, and my good friend Suji Clarkson, New Zealand Alpine team member which is supported through MacPack sponsorship. On their website, as of 2022, MacPack describes the minaret as both a two-person, three-season hiking tent and a transalpine tent. As far as I'm concerned, these are somewhat clashing descriptions, perhaps a product of MacPack trying to appeal to as broad a market as possible. And fair enough. Regardless, I'd like to take this opportunity to try and clear up any ambiguity there might be as to the minaret's best applications, starting with a bit of New Zealand history. For those unfamiliar with the term transalpine, there's no textbook definition that I've been able to locate, but it is a term that gets tossed around quite a bit in New Zealand. According to Jeff Spearpoint, acclaimed New Zealand outdoorsman and established author of books such as The Great Unknown, Shelter from the Storm, and A Bunk for the Night. The term transalpine is long established vocabulary in New Zealand. I haven't been able to find an exact origin, but Mr. Spearpoint pointed out to me that by the 1950s and likely long before that, it was a well used and understood term in the outdoors community. For a vivid definition, Mr. Spearpoint suggests that transalpine refers to, and I quote, any trip that traverses alpine territory rock and ice, usually camping along the way in rock or snowy terrain. These trips traditionally began at a road end, made your way into the hills, did an alpine traverse, and either looped back or crossed over ranges to come out somewhere different. Transalpine trips were often a way to go and climb peaks, particularly in remote areas, and there have been some very challenging trips done that way, climbing new peaks and new routes along the way. People on a transalpine trip would normally have ice axes, a harness, crampons, a rope, and basic climbing gear. They would be self-sufficient for anywhere up to three weeks. Mr. Spearpoint has even been described as a transalpinist himself. Now interestingly, there's another vernacular used in New Zealand and nowhere else that I'm aware of that fits almost this same description, which is tramping. Now circling back to the Macpac Minaret, in reality I'd say the tent is somewhat of a niche product, best suited for New Zealand's uniquely diverse terrain and conditions. There's there's almost nowhere else in the world where you can traverse rainforests, scrublands, glaciers, alpine rock, and even volcanoes all in the same day. These types of trips often require long approaches through multiple environments to get to where you want to go. And it's in this type of scenario that the minaret excels. Here's what I love and dislove about the minaret, as well as a little bit about the tent's unique origins. Number one, it's easy to use. The minaret is probably the easiest and fastest pitching tent I've ever used. It's two pole tunnel construction with full fabric pull sleeves, easy to handle attachment points and internally suspended tent inner means that you can get the tent up all by yourself in the harshest of conditions, even with gloves on. All the buckles and toggles that connect the inner to the outer are user friendly, as are the enormous internal gear storage pockets. Also, the tent inner can be retracted or removed entirely for when you need to cook inside your well-ventilated vestibule or you want to reduce your carry weight. These characteristics have been invaluable for the countless number of adventurers that have relied on the minaret for decades on expeditions and alpine missions the world over. Number two, it's almost bombproof. The MacPack Minaret properly installed, has the ability to stand up to some seriously spicy situations. This hardiness is a product of two fundamental properties of the tent. First, the fact that it's made from durable top shelf fabrics and large diameter aluminum tent poles prove that it's a burly piece of kit that's purpose built for years of reliable service in severe conditions. Anytime that I'm going on an adventure or I have to pause and question, should I really be heading out in this? This is unquestionably the tent I bring. Further, the minaret's small fabric panels and steep sides provide ample strength to resist wind and snow loading. Second, the minaret is very aerodynamic. Pound for pound, Tunnel tents tend to handle wind better than most other configurations, so long as the wind isn't blowing directly broadside and the tent is pitched correctly on suitable ground conditions. The minaret's streamlined profile means that it can handle reasonably high winds based on the simple fact that it's shorter and sleeker than most other tent models and thus has less surface area to be subject to wind. Now all that said, 
No tent is indestructible, so it's important to keep in mind that ultimately, it's just an assembly of lightweight fabrics. Bit of thread here, a little metal there, so don't do anything silly. As a bit of further history, the minaret was originally modeled after its older brother, the Macpac Olympus, an expedition-ready two-person, three-pole tunnel tent that was first designed in the early 1980s. In Macpac's 1986 catalog, which was kindly provided to me by Gavin Davidson, Macpac's design manager, the Olympus was touted as able to withstand winds in excess of 100 kilometers per hour, especially when pitched end on to the wind. The minaret itself was first offered right around 1991, if not a few years earlier. From what I can determine, earlier iterations of the minaret were true four season tents, able to withstand high consequence alpine conditions, whereas more recent versions of the tent are targeted a little more towards backpacking. Changes to the minaret that have been made over the decades include a switch from polyurethane coated to siliconized nylon for the fly around 2008, changing the floor material from PVC to PU coated nylon in the late 1990s, the tent poles were switched from Easton to DAC Featherlight and the pole diameter is varied as well. For example, mine are 9.8mm, whereas the latest are reported to be 9.6mm. Also, the dimensions of the minaret have changed over the decades, from 3.25m long in 1991 to 2.5m long today. Much of this the product of portions of the vestibule being trimmed away. Early MacPack gear really went through some rigorous testing in some truly inhospitable environments such as places like Antarctica and the Himalayas. In fact, one of their early field testers was legendary New Zealand mountaineer Rob Hall. Fast forward several decades and this thorough testing regime is still in practice today. Don't take my word for it, just ask my friend Suji. And now here's what I dislove about the tent. Number one, size. The minaret, as far as backpacking tents go, isn't really a two-person tent. Not unless the second person is someone that you're really comfortable getting cozy with. The tent inner has a long and a short side, with the short side not being very suitable for anyone taller than about 165 centimeters. So in reality, the tent functions closer to a 1.5 person tent. And as mentioned, the tent is pretty stout compared to other tents. Many people that use the minaret will find that they aren't able to sit up straight in it, which will be an issue for some. Also, the vestibule on the modern minaret is barely large enough for one person's gear and cooking activities, let alone two. Now as an alpine tent, which in my opinion the tent more closely resembles, these sacrifices on comfort are more acceptable, especially for shorter missions, as what you're having to prioritize are things like strength, ease of setup, and weight. It all comes down to what's most important to you for your particular type of adventure, as one person's asset is another person's liability. Number two, ventilation. Relative to modern three season backpacking tents, the ventilation of the minaret isn't great, especially when in forested environments, which often tend to be more humid than say, a mountaintop. This tent really requires a stiff breeze with the nose or tail end pointed into said breeze in order to stay dry on the inside. Number three, repair versus replace. What I'm referring to when I raise this is, MacPack have opted for significantly heavier floors on their tent inners based on the logic that a heavier floor will last longer, and that it will. However, other tent manufacturers have gone with much lighter floor fabrics in tandem with a footprint. The rationale behind this being that once the footprint wears out, you just replace it, resulting in an as new floor. This same approach, using what are called sacrificial wear components, is commonly used in manufacturing environments for an enormous amount of different products, ranging from the brake pads in your car to the teeth on an excavator bucket. Now in my experience as an engineer, which is my day job, this approach is almost always cheaper in the long run relative to the alternative. The only tent related scenario I can think of that you would prefer to have the thicker floor is where you need to minimize messing around during setup, such as in mountaineering. In my view, the best applications for the minaret are for long multi-day tramping trips where you know you'll be in areas with very high winds or for short and sharp mountaineering missions where you still want the comfort that a double walled tent can provide and don't mind paying the extra weight penalty. Thanks very much. I'm Joshua Johnson, and if you found this video helpful, please comment, hit like, and subscribe. Cheers.